Melon, the best herb remedy for lung congestion. Go, on, go with me today as I go and harvest my melon. Thank you for joining me today at Family Guide to Herbs Online School. I'm Carolyn Gibson, family herbalist, organic farmer, massage therapist, and I will be your instructor and guide today. My dual husband and I operate uh, Dogwood Gardens Organic Farm since 1991. We grow herbs and vegetables. Now we also grow pollinator plants for the Texas honeybee industry. Okay, Dr. Christopher considers mullen one of the best herbs for, uh, for lung congestion. And I'm going to be out walk, uh, walking around today finding which plants I want to harvest. Now this one, uh, I think I'm going to leave it where it is and just move the pot so it will have more room to grow. Mullen leaves are used to thin mucus in the lungs. That's an expectorant. They're anti-inflammatory. They're demulcent. They moisturize. They relieve swollen glands and tone the mucous membranes. The mullen flowers are made into an oil to soothe earaches, sunburns, and inflamed areas. Okay, now here's a mullen that's growing right next to my polonial tree, so I'm definitely going to just go ahead and pull it up. I'm not going to try to save it and just get the leaves, and you can see where it's forming a rosette. And that's kind of how you can tell it's mullen, and the leaves are, are fuzzy. Here's a mullen growing. They just kind of come up anywhere as they want to. I don't know how well this one will do this year because the ground's really hard and it doesn't get watered very often. I have a pretty good sized mullen uh, growing here, kind of on the edge of my uh, garden area. And I'm going to let that continue to grow so I can get the stalk and much larger leaves. Okay, here's some mullen growing under our fire pit. Uh, it just chooses where it's going to grow. Why it chose there, I don't know. It was quite a bit bigger until we built a fire, which burned it down. So now, now it's coming back up. But they're pretty indestructible. Okay, I've got my mullen in a sink full of clean, cool water. Now, my idea is, is just to slosh them around so that the sand and debris will settle to the bottom of the sink, and I may even have to do this several times. Now this is a good hint for any kind of greens you're trying to clean. Uh, running them over a, a faucet water just not going to work. But you, especially herbs that herbs and greens that are not slick, or where they have a lot of little lines in them to collect the sand and dirt. And for those that just won't come clean, I'll just discard those leaves. When melon grows a flower stalk, it's not hard to miss. It can get six to seven feet tall. It's harder to spot when it first sprouts up. When it starts forming the little rosettes, you can confirm that is melon. The leaves are large, soft, and fuzzy. In my sandy soil, the leaves get around 18 inches long. Now, I have seen the leaves twice that big in richer soils. Although the leaves can be harvested any time of the year, it is best to harvest before the flowers start to form. Once the melon starts developing flowers, the energy is going to the flowers instead of the leaves. In many parts of the country and around the world, it is considered a biannual. It will form a small rosette the first year, often around an older plant or two or three feet from it. The rosettes will stay green throughout the winter and then start forming a stalk around May. Here in East Texas, it is more like a year and a half. I often see small plants pop up in the fall, stay green all winter, and then form the stalk around April or May. As soon as early summer progresses, it will start blooming. The leaves will get smaller and smaller. The blooms start at the bottom and slowly work their way up the stalk, growing flowers throughout the entire summer. 
The mullein I have growing branches out during the summer heat, providing nectar for honeybees all summer long. It is drought resistant and may get up to six to seven feet tall. It pops up the middle of the field, side of the road, maybe in your flower gardens. If it is growing under, out, under drought conditions, it may only get two to three feet tall. I have seen it look completely dead under drought conditions and after a period of good rains, grow a new branch and form flowers for the fall. Mullet was brought to America by the settlers in the 18th century. Early Americans brought it to this new world for its medical benefits. The Native Americans quickly adapted this plant to add to their medicine bag. Mullet leaf remedies. For tea, you do one to two teaspoons of dried leaves and flowers to one cup of water. Steep this for 10 to 15 minutes. Drink three times a day. For an alcohol tincture, you would take a quarter to one teaspoon three times a day. For a glycerin tincture, you need to take one half to one teaspoon at least three times a day. Muddle leaf is combined with lobelia and with optional echinacea for swollen glands. When making a tea or tincture or oil, use three parts mullein leaf, one part lobelia, and add one part of the optional echinacea. Now, if you do not have the lobelia, try a pinch of cayenne pepper. Swollen glands are best treated with a compress combined with taking a mullein leaf tincture internally. Now, you can see my other videos, Three Home Remedies for Lung Congestion for How to Make a Mullein Compress, if you follow this link. The fresh flowers are picked for the famous earache oil. The flowers are soaked in olive oil for two to three weeks, strained and poured into a dark brown bottle with, an, with a dropper dispenser. Only a few are in bloom at one time. You really need a lot of plants or patiently pick a few each day to add to your oil. This is one of the few herbs that are infused in oil when they are fresh. The flowers are first dry wilted overnight to remove as much moisture as possible. Warm the oil to body temperature and drop three to four drops of the mullein flower infusion into each ear. Place a cotton ball into each ear to keep the oil from dripping out. And yes, you treat both ears even though one ear is hurting. Massage around the ear after applying this oil. This is repeated every few hours. Now a warm compress on the ear will make this even more effective. Mullen flowers can be combined with garlic for the same treatment. Mullen leaf and lobelia are often combined together to make a substitute tobacco. Equal amounts of mullen leaf and lobelia are combined. To, to, this, to use this combination to quit smoking, you mix equal amounts of mullen leaf and lobelia together. Add an equal amount of tobacco. And then as you make more mixes, you would gradually reduce the amount of tobacco in this mixture. The mullein leaf and lobelia mixture will have to be occasionally moistened with a few drops of water. It will be too dry and harsh. Upcoming video will get my husband Gerald to explain how he is using mullein and lobelia to help him cut down on smoking tobacco. And I will explain more about the benefits of lobelia growing lobelia and why lobelia is used in this mixture. Be sure and subscribe to be notified when this video will be coming uh, and, and like our channel. Visit my online school at familyguidetoherbs.com. Using and making herbal remedies. You do not need to be an expert, just a beginner to choose and make effective home remedies with herbs. Making natural skin care with honey, propolis, and beeswax. Learn to make lotions, infused oils, body butters, salves and balms, natural sunscreens, and much more. Pain release at your fingertips. Natural treatments to relieve your neck, headaches, shoulder areas, low back, hip and hip joints, and sciatica. Using at-home trigger point techniques, body arching, and deep breathing. And coming soon, healing with honey and propolis. Hope to see you soon.